Hi there folks, Gareth here and we're having a look at the BenQ EW2775 27 inch gaming screen. So apologies up front for the probably bad angle, narrow angle of the unboxing here, but it's such a large device it's going to be difficult to get into it without showing off the rest of my office. So this is a big 27 inch gaming screen from BenQ running at 1920 by 1080p. Uh, we have some specs down at the very bottom here. We'll try and run through as many of the specs as possible, but obviously we've got to save some stuff for the review. Primarily we're going to have a look at the hardware available here as opposed to the display technology right now, because it has to be hooked up to a PC before we can get the benefit of it. As you can see here, it says I care. This is one of the things they're pushing with this particular uh, screen because it has adaptive display to reduce eye strain and things like that. And that makes it more interesting to me. Also, it's 27 inches, so it's kind of large. Right, so we're going to put stuff together here. Well, what do we get in the box? First up, we get an HDMI cable. That looks to be the main display cable on this doohickey. Uh, it's no particular brand on it, just says HDMI. Oh, there's UF maybe there. But other than that, it might just be a st stock standard one. We have a European adapter in here for Europe. We have a UK adapter as well. It's not in a bag, so it might have been thrown in the last minute. We have the power supply. I know in one of the comments before when I did a screen, people were asking what the power supply is all about. So here we go. says up here in very small writing 100 to 200 volts 10 to 60 Hertz output 19 volts 2.1 amps I think that is obviously reading on the camera screen you, you can see it better on your monitor and it's got a three port connector here a three prong connector and it goes down to this little doohickey here, which is a fairly standard port. Sure, someone will correct me on what that's called. Right, we have a stand, or a foot, if you like, might be slightly better, which has like a, oh, that's, that's metal. Well, no, it's plastic. But as you can hear there, there's a bit of a texture to it. It's quite nice, quite plush. And then, Obviously, this is a connectable bit that fits onto the bottom of the monitor with five rubber feet to stop it from slipping. Looks quite nice. Over here we have, oh, a CD. Wow. Back in the day, we used to have CD-ROM drives in our computers. These are user manual drivers and Acrobat reader, okay, LCD monitor. And finally, BenQ, very Chinese, or whatever language that happens to be. Uh, maybe warranty information or something, but for Asia at least. Right, the panel itself. We have another connector here, which has plastic over it to protect it. Shiny, glossy plastic. Uh, metal connections, then that's the foot that obviously fits into this bit here. We'll do it now, why not? Turn that around to lock it in place. Locked. Okay, so that's the stand for the screen. It's uh, not, doesn't seem to be adjustable height wise, although it's, it's probably too early to tell. There does, there are hinges in there, but I can't get this to move. I don't see how you adjust it. 
Maybe you can't. Perhaps that'll all come clear once we get the panel out. And here is the panel. The polystyrene's a bit broken. Great. But it's entirely likely this has been around a number of other uh, reviewers. And there's the panel. What a big and glossy, oh, distinct lack of bezel. Get the foot plugged into it so I don't drop it. And that's fairly sturdy, if not perfect. Right. It's not that big. It's not as big as I imagined for a 27 inch, but then that's because it is lacking the bezel that we come to expect from large screens. This is maybe two millimeters at most, and that's quite nice. It's pretty light despite that uh, metal foot down here, but uh, other than that, it's, uh, it's a fairly light screen. I do like that. Obviously it's down the side here and then along the bottom we have about one inch which also has that texture that is on this stand here as well just to match in. And we have the BenQ branding. Little, I don't know if that's an infrared or just a design flourish at the bottom there. It does look to actually do something. And across here we have buttons LEDs and that kind of caper. We'll have a look at those in a second. Around the back. There's a speaker here, a uh, speaker grill here and a speaker grill here, which we have two watt speakers. So you're not going to be playing any major games on these speakers. You're going to rely entirely on some sort of a third party speaker that you've plugged into your computer, but these will do for maybe business machines and emitting the odd beep or a dingling of new email. We have two HDMI ports, HDMI 1, HDMI 2, and they are HDMI 1.4. These are not HDMI 2s or anything more than that at the moment. We have a VGA connector here, a headphone socket, a line in, and then the power uh, connector just there. Over here we have a Kensington lock for locking it. And of course a BenQ brand up there. And that's about it for the back. Can't say there's too much more there to get excited about. So around the front. Or underneath. It's difficult to say what these buttons are for because there's nothing on them. And then up here we have just some simple LED lights and then a power here. Now this button here is obviously crucial because it's in blue. And I'm hoping that this is something to do with the inbuilt feature that is the TVU Rhineland cer certification for flicker free and low blue light. I reckon you press that and it'll change the shade of the screen just so just to save you uh, your your eyes burning out whenever you're staring at this all day. So it'll make you more productive and more likely not to go blind. That's not scientifically proven I don't think but uh, I'll just throw that in there because it sounds quite acceptable. So the screen itself runs at 16 by 9. The pixel pitch is 0.311 millimeters. Uh, the brightness is typically 300. The native contrast is 3000 to 1. And the dynamic contrast ratio is 20 million to 1. The panel type is actually an AMAV plus E2E. E2E standing for edge to edge and the AMVA stands for Advanced MVA and that's a panel technology which is somewhat different to TN and IPS and the VA stands for Vertical Alignment. Adding an M to that makes it Multi-Vertical Alignment 
and then the A means advanced multi-vertical alignment. So what you end up getting is a more balanced color uh, with less color washout or color distortion. And it makes it much more comfortable for uh, the user to view the screen. One of the benefits of the AMVA technology is that the panels have an extremely deep black color depth, which is something that panels are always striving for. And they typically have better power consumption because of the backlight module, which lowers the number of LEDs used. However, that does mean that the response time is generally lower than a TN or an IPS panel. But we'll measure that whenever we come to do the full review. But otherwise, that is the BenQ EW2775. And check out on the site. There should be links put in below whenever the review goes live. And you can see if this is worth your time. Thanks for watching. Take care now.